Hey there. Fall is upon us here in Wisconsin and that means it's black walnut hunting time. I was out here picking black walnut and I thought maybe I ought to tape some of this so anybody who's not sure how to harvest their black walnuts will have some tips. I've got several black walnut trees. This is my favorite one here. He's got the biggest black walnuts of anybody in the yard. Uh, let's go over and take a look at some of hers. They're not all falling yet. They're just kind of starting right now. There's a good bunch. See, see they're pretty big. Uh, a lot of down on the ground already. And a lot more to come. It's a big year for black walnuts. So to harvest your black walnuts, what you're going to need is your bucket for collecting and put on your old tennis shoes and your barbecue tongs because you don't want to touch those hulls. You'll have black fingers for a couple of weeks. So all you do is walk around your yard, pop the black walnuts out of their hull and pick them up and capture them in your bucket. So the only hard part about it is it's a lot of leaning over. Now these ones are pretty fresh because the hulls are still real green. They, you want to catch them as fresh as you can. Um, the older they get, the mushier they'll get and the longer it'll take, more work you'll have to put in getting them popped out of their shell, out of their hulls. Um, and also, there's an old one here. There. Let's see if this guy's got it. There are sometimes some worms in them. Now, of course, they're going to hide from me now. Uh, now, no worms yet. Well, we'll come across some. Anyway, so you want to catch them while they're as fresh as you can, so they'll pop pretty quick. You do not want to pick them up and put them in a bucket with the holes on and everything and think you're going to be able to take care of them after they uh, dry out. It is so hard. I have actually had years where I tried that. It is very difficult to get them out of their hulls once they've all dried out. You definitely got to get them as green and fresh as you can. There's a couple of different sizes I've got out here. Now these are the big ones. Let me take one of them over here where the smaller ones are so we can see. And all right, here you go. Now here you see the two different sizes I've got. This is a this is my favorite tree. These I leave for the squirrels. They, they have a lot more patience than I do when it comes to black walnuts. And uh, I don't even bother with them. There's such a small meat in them. We'll get them pulled out here. You can see the difference. There, see that? That's something. Trees look just the same, but this little guy doesn't hardly have any meat in them worth getting. These these are real good. These have a nice meat in them. So we'll come back when I can uh, find some little black wormies, little white worms in the black hulls and show to you. All right, here we are. I found one. This is uh pop this guy open here. Looked a little older than everybody else, not too much. But you can see these worms right here in the halls, right up in the edge right here. Get that open a little more. We can get those little guys right there. Yeah. All right, so those little guys just seem to hang out in the halls. As the halls get over, older and more black, you'll see more of those little wormies coming out in them. Um, they're a little gross, but they just seem to like the halls. I've had years where half the walnuts I picked have had those worms in the halls, and I've never had any of them actually come into the nut itself um, and eat up any of the nut. So unlike if you ever picked hickory nuts, which seems to me whenever I pick hickory nuts, every single one of them has got a worm in it. Uh, I've never seen worms inside the uh, the inside shell of the walnut, just in that hull. So don't worry about them. 
they're just uh, part of Mother Nature and they like the hulls and I don't like them so everybody's happy alrighty then people my back has had about enough of walnut picking I got uh, one full one a few more in there another full one over here and now we're gonna go for part two which is you now need to let these guys cure for uh, eh, the next month or two deep into winter about the time you're getting pretty bored like January uh, you've got nothing to do in the evenings then you can go back out and scoop up a bunch of these guys and sit around the fire or your Netflix or whatever else you uh, happen to do with yourself in an evening and crack walnuts but next they got a cure and for that you got to locate a squirrel proof curing location for me that happens to be my husband's oh, horse trailer that he stores his uh, six-wheeler in uh, my husband's got only has one leg so he needs a little help getting around this place and um, this is the garage for the six-wheeler see if we can see the six-wheeler in here there it is that'd be the six-wheeler and this would be my uh, storage location for curing my black walnuts here in the front of his six-wheeler uh, first I need to clean this out a little bit you can see I still got some holes in here from last winter so I'm going to go get a broom and clean this out and I'll be right back and we'll uh, lay this new batch out for drying for this winter. Now we got a nice clean floor all sweeped up here and I brought my walnuts in and you just got to dump them out. I like to kind of spread them out a little bit. So you get them good and dried, good, uh, everybody gets good air circulation. Again, use your foot. And that's about all there is to it. Got another bucket I got to dump in here. And then we are all sealed up around the edges. In the back, no squirrel holes. That's going to be key. Took me several years before I figured out where to put these things so the squirrels wouldn't get them. I've tried a basement before, but up here in Wisconsin, basements are just too damp, and I get mold all over them, and um, it tends to kind of <clears throat> screw up some of the nut meats if they get moldy before they've dried, so you do need a dry location, and squirrel proof, and a location where you don't care that you're going to get black and brown stains all over the floor. So, oh, that didn't take too long. And there's still plenty of them out there for me and all the squirrels. Probably go back out tomorrow and get some more. Um, now, here's why you want to be sure you wear your old shoes. If you look at these shoes here. Yeah, that's not coming off. The tannins in those black walnut hulls are uh, pretty ornery. And actually, you might want to wear your rubber boots. I got a, a hunch. I can feel my feet being damp. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. You can kind of see the dark on that sock right there. Uh, kind of. There you go. Now you can see it. That's not coming off. These socks are now permanently going to be the black walnut hunting socks as well. <laughs> so... Black walnuts are also nice just for shade trees and they're pretty easy to plant. This girl here I planted about hmm, 12 years ago. Easy to plant too, just uh, how big she is right there. I, uh, there was an old tree root right there and I just took one of my big black walnuts from a previous year's harvest and um, squished it down in the ground with my feet and um, that was about it. You do want to take a fresh um, walnut 
if you're going to plant them, take a fresh walnut in the fall and go where you want your walnuts trees to be growing and just squish that that uh, nut down in the ground. They do have to freeze in order to germinate and start sprouting, but you should most of them should sprout up the next year. And um, before you know it, you'll have a big old walnut tree like this growing. And she's got nuts on her. She's uh, she's about eight years old before she started having nuts on her. Got some pretty good ones. She got any on still? There they are. There you can kind of you can see them up in there. Yeah. Nice tree. Nice tree growing up. <laughs>